Yo, I was trying to go through my comments and see what kind of tutorials you want. And a lot of you are liking the 3D stuff and are wanting more of the 3D advanced concepts here on YouTube. And that's exactly what we're going to be unlocking for you on today's tutorial. The silky smooth 3D animations. Now, I also have a very, very secret thing to give to you. Well, it's really not that secret. We're going to be giving you this project file and asset for free in our new community that we just made. Yes, the community is free to join. We are trying to make the best free editing community out there in the world so if you want the assets and you want to join a community and get a lot more information about editing hang out with other people and challenges and learning how to land your first high paying client you're going to want to join this free editing community so link is in the description for that with that let's get into the silky smooth 3d animation tutorial Alrighty, so we're here in after effects and you just want to have a composition opened up doesn't have to be anything crazy with the settings just follow what's on the screen here copy that and hit okay you want to drop the screenshot on here and you can get this in our free community that we just made it's in the community for you to be able to download so make sure you join the community you're going to get this screenshot along with this project file as well so place this on here and we're going to scale it down to roughly about the right size here and something like that's going to be good so from here what we want to do is actually create our highlight effect first before we get into the smooth 3d camera movement so to do that i'm going to click on my pen tool make sure there's nothing to select on my timeline here just because we want to make a new shape so with the pen tool I'm just going to click once over here on this comment and then hold down shift and that's going to make a straight line and you're just going to click one more time to the right and you should be good. You want to make sure the stroke is around 18 and then and then the color should be yellow here. One more thing that we have to do with this. If you don't see the blend mode here that we're going to change, make sure you, you click this toggle switches and it'll pop up and you'll see the blend mode. We're just going to change that to a linear burn. Once that's a linear burn, we're going to animate it real quick. Do that. You're going to drop this down to where you see this button and where it says add click on that and you're going to go to trim paths we're going to drop down trim paths and then you'll see the start or end so when we decrease the end it, it goes from right to left and that's what we want so we want it to animate with the end so we're going to create a keyframe for end at zero percent drag our playhead out to the right and then increase all the way to a hundred percent highlight both keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease and then we're going to go to the graph editor here hit v on your keyboard select one on the right and then drag it to the left and you'll see it comes in a little bit more smooth we're just going to drag this out more and we're going to have to change the, the timing of this later on in the video but it's good to do that animation first because once we get into messing with the 3d scenes uh, it gets pretty difficult to you know have something like this in a 3d scene and, and make it look right so from here what we want to do obviously create a new camera so with the camera settings, you can do two node camera preset to 50 millimeters and you should be good. We're going to not have enable depth of field on just yet. We'll do that a little bit later and you can copy these settings here and hit OK. From there, I'm going to create a new null. This is really important when it comes to the silky smooth animations here. Working with null objects is what's going to allow us these animations together. So you're going to do a null object and we're going to parent the camera to this null. OK, and then we're going to also make sure you hit toggles and switches. So we could see the 3d we're going to make sure everything here is checked off for 3d so including that null now once we hit p on our keyboard you notice we can move the null it's moving the entire camera here bring our playhead to the beginning we're going to create a keyframe for position hit r on your keyboard we're going to do x rotation and y rotation and i'm just going to hit u and it's going to just show us uh, all the keyframes that we're working with here and one thing i'm going to do is go to two views just to show you what is happening here so on this left side this is kind of confusing here on the left view here it's actually the right side of the camera so if it doesn't look like that all you have to do is make sure you're selected on the second view and you know when you're selected with these blue triangles so if i select the one on the right this one's selected now so make sure on the one on the left that's selected and then you're going to go to this little drop down menu here and just choose right and that's going to show you the right side of camera so here's our camera here's our screenshot that we have and it's just going to give us a little bit more of a better view of how the camera is moving in this 3d space so from here i'm going to start it off pretty zoomed in so i'm going to go to the position keyframe zoom that in quite a bit and then of course we want to position it right Gonna move it to the left, move it up right about here. I'm also gonna have a little bit of a rotation in it as well. So I'm gonna go over to X rotation, kinda angle it down so you can see my camera is pointing up here. So we're gonna have to mess with the position again. We wanna move it up. I think a little bit more zoomed in as well can 
can help out here. So I kind of want to start it here. And I know what you're thinking. There's a black background. So that's actually easily avoidable. We could just go to new solid, go to the eyedropper tool, select the screenshot color and then hit OK. We're going to toss this behind our screenshot and we could also make it a 3D layer too. And then with this, we're going to just bring it up in space. So there we go. So this is how it's going to start off here. The positioning of it's good. And we're going to bring our playhead to the right. And then we're just going to move positioning down here right before we see that one comment that we want to highlight. So right about here is what we want to do. So for the Y rotation, I want to add a little bit more of an angle to it. So my camera's like getting pushed back here. And then obviously we have to adjust the positioning a little bit more. So that's pretty good right there. And then X rotation doesn't have to be anything crazy. That's fine. So to get this a smooth camera effect initially before piecing it into another movement, which what we want to do here for the X rotation is highlight both keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. We're gonna go over to our graph editor and we're gonna actually change the way this looks because right now we're manipulating the speed here. So if yours looks like this, what you need to do is right click and then you wanna do edit value graph. That's gonna allow us to get this silky smooth animation. So what we're gonna do here is take the top one, drag that to the left, take the bottom one and drag that to the right and it should look like that. And that's going to give us our very smooth animation. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the Y rotation. So I'm going to right click, give my assistant, easy ease, go over to the graph editor. We should be on the value graph now. And we're going to just going to drag that to the left and then this to the right a little bit. The one on the top should just be a tad bit more than the one on the bottom. Now for the positioning, it's actually different. What you need to do, you're going to highlight it. You're going to right click. You're going to right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, go over to the graph editor and you'll notice that you can't, you can't manipulate them. So what you need to do is actually right click on the position, do separate dimensions. And what that will allow us to do is now move things. So the blue doesn't need to be moved because there's a straight line here, but with the red, we're going to go left here. Just basically what we're doing uh, with the, uh, the rotation ones. And the same thing for the green. We're going to go left and then the bottom one to the right. So to do this really quickly, what you want to do is highlight all the keyframes here. You want to download this plugin called Flow. I believe it costs a little bit of money, but I highly recommend getting it as it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when doing these kind of animations here. So definitely download Flow. The link in the description will be there for that. Can't remember if it costs money, but if it does, I highly recommend purchasing it. And yeah, so with Flow, you just want to create a graph that looks like this. You can literally manipulate it, make it look like that, and just hit apply. That's automatically going to just apply this super smooth effect, as you can see. Very smooth. I'm going to drag these keyframes out a little bit to the right, just to make it a little slower, and it looks good. Now, here's where the secret sauce is when it comes to actually piecing together these 3D camera animations and making it look smooth. A lot of people will on this either like they're using the camera layer or the uh, null layer to manipulate the camera in 3D space. A lot of people will just keep everything on one null layer. If you do that, that's what's going to make it very rigid where it's like all right, the animation happens and then hard stop or something wonky happens and then it goes into the next position you want it to you know go to. So if you do that, like right here, you can see I manipulated the position on the same null, it's already getting funky here. Don't do that. What you actually want to do is create a new null layer. So we're going to go new, null object. From here, we want to parent the null, that's the one that we just manipulated, the one that has the keyframes, to the one that we just created. Okay. So now with this null object here, what we can do is manipulate the position again. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. I'm going to create a keyframe and notice where I'm creating a keyframe. I'm not creating it right here. I'm creating it like as the, the first animation is coming to an end. That's where you want to set the keyframe. So I'm going to create one for position. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard. Oh, another thing too is make sure it's in 3D and then we're going to create a keyframe for X and Y rotation. Okay. Remember it's right before this one ends. So now with this one, I'm going to drag my playhead out to the right. I'm going to manipulate the position to where we see that comment that we want to highlight. We can take that Y rotation, make it a little bit more. Put it in the right spot here. Maybe take the X rotation, mess with it. Get that Y rotation moving a little more and then kind of have it closer so we can see the things here. With just doing that, now it's like piecing together 
a little bit better. But of course, we need to add that silky smooth graph editor effect. So I'm going to highlight all these. Remember, if you don't have flow, you have to go in, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, go to the graph editor and drag it like that if you don't have flow. Now, if you do have flow, all you want to do is highlight all of this and then just hit apply. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So I, once again, highly recommend flow. And now look at that. Look how well that's piecing together. Could even have it a little bit more to the left. Perfect. So we want to do one more animation. We're going to drag it all the way to the right as the, the highlight gets to go there. So we're going to create another null layer. So anytime you're going to you know go from one point to another point to another point to another point, you always add another null object. That's really important. Do a null object, so a new one here. And then the one that's under it, that's what you're pick whipping to the one that we just made. So And then once again, where I want my playhead to create these keyframes, I'm going to hit P on my keyboard, make sure it's a 3D uh, scene here, where I want my playhead is the right before this one ends. So right before the one that we just created ends. I'm gonna hit a keyframe for position, another one for X and Y. I'm just gonna hit U on my keyboard. That's gonna bring up just those ones. And then from here, I'm gonna drag my playhead to the right. We can mess with the Y rotation. So I kind of want it to swing around just like this. And then of course we need to zoom it in a whole lot more. And then just mess with the position a little bit. I think the X rotation is fine, so I'm just gonna create a keyframe for that. Highlight all of these, and with flow, just hit apply. So now if we watch this back, connects well, connects well, connects really well. So that's all it is. I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit more just to give more, just to give time to read it. That's all it really is. So whenever you wanna get nice, silky smooth animations and you're piecing something together with a 3D camera, use null objects. And every time you're gonna go from one point to another, create another null object. And that's what's gonna give you the silky smooth animation. A couple things that we wanna add to this is just stylizing it. So we're gonna add some secret sauce to make it look nice here. Uh, the first thing though is we want this animation, the actual high effect to come in at the right area so right about here is when we want it to come in so here's our highlight I'm gonna drag that to the right so this is when it's gonna start coming in I'm gonna hit you on my keyboard and then the last null that we made I'm just gonna hit you again and I'm just gonna match the highlight keyframe with the camera movement here so it should maybe a little bit longer here have that over there all the way to the right but then take this and put it at the right spot here yeah just like that it's perfect. I love how YouTube is spelled wrong at the end, but whatever. And, and I appreciate all the comments, guys. Like, you guys are sick for uh, all the support that you're giving us. So there it is, guys. But now we want to add that secret sauce that I was talking about. So to do that, there's a couple of things that we want to do. The first is actually creating some depth of field with our camera. This is going to make it feel really real. Vox does this a lot with their map effect. So to do this, we're going to drop down our camera options here. Then we're going to turn depth of field on and we're going to keep aperture around like 40 for now. We might have to change it just based off of uh, what's going on here. And then the only thing that we want to mess with here is focal distance and once again, aperture. So we're going to create keyframes for that. So the reason why we want this right side in view is because when I mess with the focal distance, you might have to hold down shift to really manipulate it best. Notice on the right side, when you see this bar here, when I push it out, everything gets more blurry. When I bring it in and align it with the aperture, actual screenshot here in frame or everything's you know not blurry anymore so that's our focal distance this is where the camera is focusing on think of the actual real camera like where what's it focusing on what's in the foreground what's in the background like this is deciding what our 3d camera is focusing on so with that we want it to obviously be focused on the right area here i'm going to turn up the aperture quite a bit to get more of a a, a better feel to it, more of that bokeh effect or more of a 3d feel i guess so as it comes down here you can really see that focal distance is messing up so what we want to do is take that focal distance and make sure everything is in focus Focus here, but the aperture is a little too much, so I'm just gonna bring that down a tad bit. It's, it's a little too much here, right around to 150 is good. And then as the camera begins to animate again, once again, the focal distance is off, so we're gonna just find the right area for that. And then just bring down that aperture a little, a little too much is going on once again, and that should look good. So we just want to keep on making sure everything's in focus here that we want. So right here, things get a little outlined. So I'm going to create a keyframe right before for both of them and then drag this to the right and then mess with that focal distance to make sure everything's in view here. And then we can even mess with the aperture to give a little bit better of effect here. 
Okay, that should be good for the camera focusing. I'm gonna bring it back to one view. So everything's looking sexy smooth and the camera focus definitely adds another realistic element to it, but there's still some things that we wanna add to really tie in the look here. So what we're gonna do now is create a new adjustment layer. On this adjustment layer, we're gonna throw on a VR digital glitch and we're gonna go over to distortion, drop that down, go over to geometry distortion X, make that zero, make the distortion complexity one, and then the distortion rate zero. And then we can take the color distortion. I'm gonna type in 12 and see how that looks. Yeah, we just want a little bit of that RGB color separation. We don't want too much. So in this case, the scenario, 12 is perfect. We're gonna add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna look up grain. So we're gonna add some grain to it. We're gonna go over to final output change the viewing mode to that. And then the color, we're gonna drop that down, do monochromatic. Might be a little hard to tell on your side, uh, you know, the grain here, but maybe if I up it a little bit, 1.5, it will cause a little grain. It's probably hard to tell with the, the screen recording, but this adds another element to it. Another adjustment layer that we're gonna throw on here, and we're gonna make this one a vignette. And you can up the amount if you want. Depends on how you're feeling with the vignette. Something like that should be good. One more adjustment layer that I am gonna throw on and we're gonna look up CC lens. Toss that on there. You can see everything's looking a little crazy. So what we wanna do is the convergence, bring that down a little bit. And then of course the size, we wanna up the size. So it fills in the whole screen. Basically we're just trying to get this like rounded effect. So even like the convergence, you kind of want to bring that into the negatives. It's going to give this rounded effect to everything. Just like that. And now obviously it's looking pretty weird. So what I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer and we're going to look up transform. And with this, we're just going to scale in a little bit just so, uh, you know, everything uh, fills the frame here. Okay, there's one last thing that we need to do to actually tie in everything, and that's adding some motion blur. So I'm going to highlight all the nulls and the, you know, everything that is under the camera. We don't need to highlight the adjustment layers, and we're just going to toggle the motion blur for everything. When it comes to motion blur, we'll see if it looks good, but what you want to do to make it, if you want more motion blur, you're going to go over to composition, composition settings go over to advanced and you'll see a shutter angle the higher your shutter angle is the more motion blur the less your shutter angle is the less motion blur so right now i have mine at 300 and we'll see if that's fine all right guys there we have it here's our final animation with everything tied together with the stylization as well and looking very silky smooth here guys so once again you want to use null objects to piece together these 3d animations and it's gonna look silky smooth right that's how you get it so with that guys thanks for watching once again Again, the project files and assets are in our new free community that we just made. We're going to be working on the best free community for editors. So make sure you join that if you want to get this screenshot and the project file along with it. And with that, I'll see you inside the community and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.